When you run a paired samples t-test in SPSS, you get three tables of output. The first table provides descriptive statistics for each set of scores. Looking at this table, we can see that there were 15 participants in this study, and when exposed to the control stimulus, they responded, on average, within 422.6 milliseconds. When they were exposed to the experimental stimulus, they responded, on average, within 320.8 milliseconds. Although these two means certainly differ, a null hypothesis significance test, in this case a paired samples t-test, is required to determine whether or not they differ by more than would be expected by chance. The second table reports the Pearson's correlation between the two sets of scores. At 0.499 this correlation is positive and quite strong, as we would predict. Participants who responded quickly during the control trials also responded quickly during the experimental trials. Participants who were slower during the control trials also tended to be slower during the experimental trials. Typically we can ignore this second table and we can focus our attention on the third. In the first part of this table, we can see that the difference between the two means is 101.8 milliseconds. And if we look to the right, we have the results of the paired samples t-test. The null hypothesis for this test is that the difference between the two means is actually zero. As the t-test here is statistically significant, because the significance level is less than 0.05, we can reject this null hypothesis. So in other words, the two condition means differ by more than would be expected by chance alone. And to report this finding, we might say something like, Using a paired samples t-test, we found that participants' mean reaction times in milliseconds to virtual cyclists wearing fluorescent vests were significantly faster than their reaction times to virtual cyclists wearing non-fluorescent vests during a computer-based nighttime driving simulation. Note that even though the significance value is reported as 0 0.000 by SPSS, you should use less than 0 0.001 in your reporting. Also note that if your research hypothesis was directional, you can divide the p-value in half and report the test as one-tailed. Finally, don't forget that when writing up a piece of research like this, you may also be required to report the results of your assumption testing, an effect size, and a confidence interval around the mean difference. The confidence interval is reported by SPSS, but you'll need to run your assumption tests and calculate an effect size separately. And you can find advice on doing this in StatHand.